Hello, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. We are riding around uh, on an extensive test drive in a 2006 Doge Charger 5.7 liter V8. It's got 122,346 miles on the odometer. Customer states a uh, vehicle randomly stalls uh, sometimes. Uh, they've had a lot of work done to it. Uh, they put a fuel tank in it, fuel pump seals, uh, I think some fuel line hoses. It's had an EVAP purge solenoid put in there. So people have been putting in a uh, gas, uh, gasoline system and uh, uh, EVAP purge uh, system components in this car for, I think for like months now. And the stalling issue uh, seems to be returning um, at random. Uh, I understand it's been to a few other service facilities. Uh, nobody could create or recreate the stalling, uh, which is exactly what I'm out here trying to do. Uh, this is like my third or fourth test drive on this car. Uh, I've driven it in traffic. I've driven it on the highway. I'm, I'm kind of driving the thing everywhere I can think of to kind of drive it to hopefully get it to stall, but it's, it doesn't seem to want to be doing it. It almost stalls if I actuate the EVAP purge solenoid, but uh, it, it, everything appears so far to be functioning as it should be, so I can't really figure out what the deal is. It's just not doing it for me. It's dead end after dead end. So I'm going to keep riding around. Um, hopefully I can get this thing to do something and uh, give us a path of, uh, of repair here. Uh, maybe it'll even give us a trouble code. I mean, at this point right now, I've got no check engine light and there were no codes uh, stored in the ECM. So I'm, I'm hoping with enough drive cycles, maybe it'll, uh, it'll kick me off a code and then we can kind of go through the diag tree and go from there to see what the deal is with this uh, stalling situation. But as of right now, I, I really don't know. I just don't know. Here, let's do some wide open throttle Dodge Charger stuff. Let's see if we can't get this thing to uh, start acting up on us. Full speed. All right, so I'm like halfway to Sarasota. We're right next to the airport and this thing still isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing around. We're gonna go back the other direction and, uh, and uh, well, let's see if it doesn't, uh, doesn't give us anything to go off of. Actuator. It's in there. Well, that's not the problem. That's a HVAC thing. Okay, that's gonna drive me nuts. Cut it out, actuator. I know. We're gonna pull over and shut her down. No, seriously, you need to stop. We're gonna pull over and shut this thing down and then we'll do a restart. Uh, the logic behind that is to uh, start over another drive cycle. Uh, some trouble codes require more than one drive cycle in order to set, so we wanna go ahead and initiate that second drive cycle. ASAP. I think I found the spot over here to our left. U-turn action. Ring. There we go. We'll go inside of this little parking lot looking thing right here. We'll hang out over here. All right. Parking the auto. Let's pull up the scan tool data and see if there's anything uh, going on here. First, let's shut her down. Pew. Open the door so it thinks we got out. Close the door so it knows we're out. Open the door so it thinks we got in. Close the door. Restarting the engine. There we go. That was interesting. There was a car parked right there and they left as soon as I pulled up. They left with a quickness. I wonder what they're doing. Oh well. So yeah, let's go into codes menu and see if it's set any trouble codes while we were out. That's a negative. It didn't have any when I started uh, looking into this car and it still has none. I don't know. Back to data we go. So we've, uh, we've made it down to uh, fuel trims. Got our short terms here and here, long terms here and here, and this stuff's, it's right on the money. We're hovering very close to zero. Uh, let's give it a little bit of throttle here. We're up to about, about 1500 RPM. These fuel trims are looking good. Short terms are switching around. This is what we want to see. And again, long terms are hanging out near zero. I, I just don't know. So I'm kind of looking at my O2s here. We've got bank one, sensor one volts, and we're switching between almost zero and 0.8 volts. We've got bank two, sensor one. These are all the pre-cat sensors. And we're also switching between zero and like 0 0.8, 0 0.7 volts. So the O2s are all doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, let's go out and drive it again, or drive it some more. I'm gonna head back to the shop. I've got really nothing kind of to go off of. I'm, I'm hoping this thing gives me some kind of trouble code or something like that. I can't tell in the scan tool uh, when the last time 
the uh, OBD2 system had been cleared and codes were erased. So I, uh, I don't know if it's been, you know, two days or two months since the last time somebody worked on this thing. But what I do know is it's been stalling for like six, seven months now, randomly, just very intermittent. And I'd like it to at least do it or give me a trouble code or something to go off of because I can't, I can't do anything until I've got a little bit of a baseline to work with. Very unfortunate. It's kind of frustrating for me because I spend time on stuff and I can't really get anywhere with it. And I don't know what to do because I have nothing to do because it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Recommend nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just needs a good old Italian tune-up. Not really certain. Roll. I see you. He sees me because I'm yellow. All right, well, he's back there beginning Italian tune-up now. More steel. Look, it's another, another one of these things. Mm. Okay, I returned to the shop after many miles of test driving and we still have no stalling. We still have no codes, no rough running and kind of no direction. So, uh, well, it's getting a little late. I'm gonna go ahead and park this thing. It's, it's going home time. We're gonna park it. I'll pick it up again in the morning. Okie dokes, it's the next day. We're headed back into the Hemi powered V8 charger. Uh, I have kind of an update. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, recreate the conditions, the stalling. And uh, we called the guy and he says that it can almost, you can almost guarantee it's gonna happen after refueling the fuel tank. So perhaps we have an EVAP system issue or some kind of a fueling issue. So what I'm gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna go for a little road trip one more time, head over to the gas station and uh, put some fuel in this thing and uh, then see if it wants to stall after having received a full tank of gasoline. So let's try that. Back out on the road we go and uh, we'll see if this thing's gonna stall or not gonna stall. We're not going far. There's a Circular K gas station uh, just around the block over here. So we're gonna go over there. You see that guy right there? My big blue toolbox that I have in the shop, I bought from that guy like 10, 12 years ago. It's funny just how small the world really is sometimes, isn't it? Very strange. There's the fuel station. See what I meant? Circular K. It's actually Circle K, but I like to say Circular K because that's more fun. More funner. Anyway, let's swing into here, get some fuel. What side is my fuel on? Uh, left side, okay. Left side, strong side. Yeah, did you guys know about that? The uh, fuel gauges in vehicles should have a little arrow on them. And that little arrow tells you what side the fuel filler cap is located on. Fun fact, it's useful if you have a rental car. All right, parking the auto, Pew. powering down. Let's fill this thing up to the brim and, uh, and see what happens. Perhaps it's had an overfill event and the, uh, uh, what you call it, the EVAP canister is full of fuel. That's, that's a possibility here. Okay, we'll give that a push. There we go, okay. Checking out the cap. O-ring looks okay. All right. Begin fueling now. Full it is. Dang, 35 bucks for 10.423 gallons of fuel. That's a lot of dough. There we go, need receipt. Print. All right, let's see what this thing does when we restart the engine. Maybe it'll stall, maybe it won't. Hmm, not yet. Another. That's a negative, no stalling just yet. Let's go for a ride and see what it does. I also understand that if I were to drive this on the highway and then pull off like uh, onto an exit ramp, it would be inclined to stall at that point as well. So if this fails, we may have to go and uh, pick up some speed on a larger road, take some ramps and see what happens. But for now, we'll try it on surface streets. Driving, driving, driving without stalling. Hmm, 
Not yet. We're coming up on US 301. That's kind of a long stretch towards Sarasota. So we're gonna head south and pick up a little bit of speed. And uh, yeah, we'll take uh, we'll take one of the surface street exits and see if this thing stalls after we, uh, oh, it's doing something. I just felt it kind of kind of shudder a little bit. You gonna do it? Huh. Here we go. It's doing it. A little bit of shuddering. Okay, light's green. Safe. Okay, here's a good turn off. No traffic here. We're just gonna turn and kind of pull over on this road and see what happens. I don't think I've ever been down this road. I don't know this road. Yeah, let's just stop right here. A few moments later. No, nothing yet. Okay. Uh, back out to the big road. Let's flip around. Drive through the grass. It's Florida, we can do that. Duke's Hazard style. Let's see if it does it here. Okay, nada. Nothing happened here. Oh, thank you car for moving over. Very courteous of you. Full speed. So do you guys remember earlier how I was talking about do not pull out in front of trucks because that'll make you dead? Well, there's another truck right behind us over there. And uh, I want to add on to that one. Do not get in front of a truck and then hit the brakes to turn. So don't pass the guy just to slow down and turn. Like think about what you're doing in life and try to not get in front of the truck because you accelerating back to normal speed is one thing. Those guys accelerating back to normal speed is a completely different thing and it's really not cool to pass the truck just to hit the brakes and then make a right. Like it's, it's completely unacceptable and you really should not do that. Uh, that also counts if you're making a left. So point being, stay away from the front of the trucks that's not a safe place for anyone to be. They don't want you there. You don't need to be there. Just don't be there, okay? Just just think about what you're doing. And if you have to turn coming up pretty soon, just move over and get behind the truck and wait an extra like six nanoseconds. The entire world will be a better place if you guys can practice that type of procedure. And you know who you are. And that will end my traffic safety monologue of the day. Are we stalling? No, we're not stalling. Ah, <sighs> frustrating. All right. All right, I'm at another red light. Uh, still not seeing anything with the stalling. Uh, like I know it shuttered that one time, but it has not, uh, it has not happened since. I, I don't know yet. Still no stalling. Stopped again. No stalling. I'm headed back towards the shop. We're gonna, we're gonna swing back into the lot and nose this thing in. Um, I think what I wanna do is pull the vapor purge solenoid under the hood, disconnect the line that goes back to the tank, and let's uh, let's look in there to see if there's any trace elements of fuel. You know, maybe there'll be a little bit of liquid saturation somewhere inside of the line, or maybe inside of one of the tubes in the uh, in the purge solenoid. There's a there's a possibility here that the evap system is pulling fuel from the tank and it's entering the intake manifold when it shouldn't be. Okie dokes, we have returned to the shop space here. Let's pop an easy hood and take a look at those vapor lines, see if there's any fuel in there. It's really all I've got so far to work with here. Powering down. Pew. And of course, pop an easy hood wherever that hood thing is. Where are you, hood latch? There it is, found it. Hood popped, achieved. Okay, down in the back of the engine compartment here, hood's open. This is our EVAP purge solenoid. Uh, you can see it's nice and shiny. Somebody has replaced this thing uh, once upon a time. What I would like to do here is pull off these little lines 
This is the one to the tank. This is the one to the intake manifold vacuum source. Let's check these and see if there's any fuel. Uh, I smell fuel, but I, I would like to see some fuel here. If it's drawing fuel from the tank through this valve and into the intake, it'll run silly rich for X amount of time. And uh, that will cause, uh, cause a stalling condition. Yeah, I can smell some fuel in there, but I'm not seeing any fuel in there. I was hoping to see some. It's not, uh, not okay. All right, we need to, I need to put this thing on a rack. Let's check uh, the underneath carriage, take a look at the fuel tank and uh, the uh, vent canister, and uh, we'll see if that's uh, where our issue may lie. Put that back. All right, the rack is set. Moving on over to the black subscribe button. 5.7 liter Dodge Charger Hemi V8. Moving on up. Let's go and check the underneath carriage. See what lies beneath. Uh, while this is going up, uh, I have done a little bit of uh, back end research on this vehicle. And I have found that there were, uh, this is actually kind of a common symptom with this. There have been some bulletins uh, suggesting that a fuel tank replacement is required because the vents on the tank, I guess, stay closed. And what happens is the, uh, the EVAP system will just suck up fuel from the tank and it ends up in the purge solenoid. Uh, however, uh, I don't know if that applies to this. I don't know if it's a recall or just a service bulletin. Uh, I do understand that this car has recently been at a local dealership, and that tells me that had there been a recall, it would have been performed at that time. Uh, however, the symptom uh, still remains, so I'm assuming that that uh, particular uh, service bulletin or recall does not apply to this vehicle, because if it had, the dealership would have done it. All right, coming down below here, what do we have? We have, we've already got a new fuel tank in this. Yeah, see how that's kind of shiny? It's not brand new, it's been here for a minute, but yeah, look at those, uh, those vent lines up there, see those? Those are nice and shiny. I see witness marks on the bolts for the straps for the fuel tank. So this tank's already been out once upon a time. Somebody has already replaced this as per those uh, bulletins. Uh, it appears that that has not fixed the issue then, okay? So I guess we can rule out that it needs a fuel tank Let's find the, uh, the vapor canister. That's what we're gonna be looking for next. Where's the vapor canister? Let's see. Okay, we've got some lines here. That one runs up and goes into the fender well. I wonder if that's just the vent. Let's, uh, let's let this down some, pull the wheel off and maybe pull this inner fender liner out and see if we can't locate the vent canister or the actual vent to see if that thing's not clogged or restricted. We've obviously got some kind of a there's got to be some kind of restriction here. I, I think it's pulling in fuel, but I, I really don't know. I can't even get the thing to stall on me. It's like a, a wild Chrysler goose chase. Incoming loud noises. Let's pull this wheel off. Looks like the rain has kicked back up again. I believe we're experiencing some kind of a tropical depression due to warm Gulf of Mexico water temperatures, as well as increased weather activity on the African continent. It's gonna be a good hurricane season this year. All right. Anyway, let's, uh, how do we get this out of here? We've got some clips. It's all plastic clips. Let's get this thing apart real quick. What do we have down here? take a gander I think somebody has also been here before yeah there's a zip tie at that vent hmm I don't know if this has been replaced or not yeah it has that says dormant on it somebody's changed that thing before hmm I don't know guys take, oh, flashlight down everything on this car regarding its EVAP system has been replaced. Fuel tank's been replaced. It's all been replaced. Even this, uh... oh, wait, wait, wait. I wonder if the canister is original. That does not look like it's been replaced. Hmm. Yeah, we've got a new vent valve here that says dormant on it. 
someone's relocated the uh, the vent filter. Here's the line going to the tank. Let's uh let's open this line up and see if it's got like pressure in it or whatever. Gonna come off. Okay. And there is fuel in there. We have fuel. We have fuel right here. See that? Interesting. How did we get fuel all the way up here? This is above the tank. Let's take it apart here. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna pull this uh, this whole canister out of here and we're gonna take a look at it. Let's do that next. Connector looks good. 10 millimeter coming in. Come on down vapor system. All right, so we've got our canister. I think that might be OE. I don't see Dorman marks on it or anything. It's kind of tough to say here. I can't tell if there's witness marks on these fasteners or not. This, uh, this very well could be the original unit. And if there was a failure once with the issue with the tank, it would have pulled fuel into this canister which could have, uh, could have damaged it. Um, tell you what I'm thinking, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should put some smoke into this and pressurize it and see if it actually has flow. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take this bracket off and remove this, uh, this filter and remove the solenoid here. That way I can get some good access to these fittings. We can plumb, uh, plumb some smoke into it and see what kind of flow we get out of this unit right here. All right, let's, uh, let's see how this thing is gonna go here. I need to pull this valve off because it's, uh, there's a bolt behind it that I cannot reach, or a nut. Pull this guy out, disconnected. One more on this side. Come off, there we go. Now, disconnect this line right here anything inside any gasoline no I don't think so okay all right rolling in the smoke machine right over here it's got a 12 volt battery for its power supply we need to connect shop air to it once we turn it on uh, effectively uh, it's just a giant vaporizer uh, there is a uh, like it's almost like a baby oil solution in there the thing will heat up and the air will press through the tube uh, via the air pressure from the shop air hose and it'll send a very rich white smoke at a regulated pressure and we can connect that smoke to the ports on this uh this canister here to see if it's got a restriction or uh, any, even a leak something like that so let's smoke test this thing um then we'll go from there all right shop air coming in the battery's already connected hit the button red light powers this on we have a flow meter and a regulator over here on the right. We can see the uh, the ball valve is all the way at the top. See that right there? So we now have some flow. It's making smoke. This is good. Let's go ahead and connect this guy. Stay, smoke machine, don't fall. There, let's plug this thing in, see what it does. Firing up the, uh, the flow. Let's see if we have flow out of this canister. There it is. The canister is flowing. Let's plug it off. Okay, if we, if you notice the meter, flow did drop off. See that right there? Focus. Yep, flow dropped off. Let's take my finger off of it. Okay, I'll pull my finger off. There goes our flow. Okay, so we have flow through the canister. Smoke is coming out. It does not appear to have any leaks. Uh, so that tells me this canister is okay. While the smoke machine's out, let's go ahead and connect it to the vehicle. And I guess we can smoke the fuel tank and see if that's got any kind of leaks or problems of that nature. Maybe it does. Maybe it does not. Let's connect this. 
over here. There we go. All right, moving back up. Let's just check the top of the tank, the hoses and fittings and whatnot. Just make sure there's no leaks while we've got the machine out. All right, flow is falling back to zero. So the system's all sealed off. Let's, uh, let's see here, what do we do next? Let's find the line that runs up front to the purge valve. We'll disconnect that line and see if that line has any kind of flow. And I think it's way up here. I think it's that one, maybe. Uh, better idea, we're just gonna let this down and I'll pull it off up at the front. We'll just see if we have flow all the way up front at the uh, purge valve. Yay. Okay, back under the hood, back to the purge valve again. I'm gonna figure out what's wrong with this car. I've had this thing for like three weeks. It's driving me nuts. It's driving me nuts. Ah, disconnected. Come on, come out. Okay. No smoke, let's check for flow. That should be a direct line. And yeah, yeah, we have flow here. Whole bunch of it, see that right there? Let's go back and see if the smoke makes its way forward. We have smoke flowage. Let's plug that guy back in. Uh, just for fun, let's disconnect the other side and just make sure that that thing does not leak. I don't think it does. The valve is closed right now because we're shut off and it's, it's not leaking, there's no smoke here, okay. So the EVAP system appears to be okay. That thing's been replaced, that's the purge valve. That's the one that turns on that allows the entire vapor uh, accumulation from the tank to get reburnt through the engine. So when that thing decides it wants to purge the tank, it opens up that valve, starts pulling vapor from the gas tank into the intake, burns that up. That way it cannot escape into the atmosphere and ruin the ozone layer. Uh, that thing's not the problem. The lines are not the problem. The vent canister is not the problem. It appears that the filter is not the problem. And it also appears that this vent valve right here is not the problem. So what is the problem? Why are we pulling fuel? Why did I find fuel at this fitting right here? I wanna know why that was saturated with gasoline. All right, so I've been digging and doing some research. Uh, there's a component to this fuel tank. It's called the multi-function fuel control valve or something like that. Uh, it's basically an automatic spring-loaded vent valve. And I understand that the plastic deteriorates and the thing uh, expands or something. And then the valving portion inside of it gets stuck. Uh, according to the interwebs, they say you have to replace the fuel tank. Uh, however, this thing has already had a fuel tank replaced. So I'm, I'm a little reluctant uh, to believe that that's the issue. However, all the evidence is still telling me that that happens to uh, be the problem. Uh, this would also include uh, a report and an investigation from the NTSB uh, several years ago around this uh, exact symptom. All right, so real quick, uh, a little bit more evidence. Do you see this connector right here? I have just disconnected that and looky right there, you see that? That's more liquid fuel. So now we know why it's stalling. It's pulling liquid fuel into the intake manifold. So whatever has been done to remedy this in the past did not work. And they, like I said, they put a fuel tank in it. So we know it's drawing in fuel kicks when it shouldn't be. We, we, that's confirmed now. We found fuel here, still some there. We found fuel here, saw fuel up front at the purge valve but uh, it shouldn't be pulling that fuel in. That's, that's the main issue here. I'm not, not okay with this because the solution to the issue has already been implemented. And that solution is replace the fuel tank. Now I've noted uh, the part number over here, the 0472603 alpha alpha. Uh, when you Google it, it comes back to a charger with a three six. But if you cross reference the number into the Mopar part list, 
uh, it says it's also applicable to the 5.7. We're in the back of the tank at the differential. If we look up, we can see here that it seems to have some uh, new lines in there. Now, right around this location is where that little, uh, that valve is supposed to be. Can you guys see that in the mirror right there? That valve, which is part of the tank, is the reason that the situation began, which is why folks were replacing the fuel tanks to begin with. Uh, that also looks like it's uh, looks like it's new. So we either have a, uh, a faulty replacement tank or something very, very new and interesting is going on here. Um, so we gotta go with what we know. We know that the engine is drawing in fuel through the EVAP system when it should not be. We know that the canister is not clogged. We know that the vents work. Uh, we know that the filter is not restricted. We know that the gas cap is good, yet we're still getting fuel up here, higher up above the tank. I, uh, I gotta think that based on everything we have here, we have a faulty tank. Like it's gotta be that little check valve thing up the top here that is uh, that's faulty and causing this issue. It's gotta be the same thing. I really don't know what else it could be. Um, what do you guys think? Do you, uh, anybody had any charger that experiences such things? Any, uh, any Nissan or Nissan, any, <laughs> any Dodge technicians out there that, uh, that work on these things? Like, uh, what's the deal? What's going on with this car? Why does it do what it does after the solution has already been implemented? Hmm. That's not cool. It's not tight all the way. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to phone in the friends on this one. Guys, somebody out there in the interwebs, uh, let me know what I should do. I'm, I'm leaning towards getting another fuel tank and uh, popping another tank in this unit. I, I really don't want to do that because this is a good part or a new part. But uh, all the evidence here is telling me I need to replace this fuel tank again. Uh, these things are not cheap, so uh, I, I need some assistance. Somebody knows something out there that sees this video. Let me know. I need some help. What should we do? Uh, I'd really hate to pull the trigger and put another tank in here to have the exact same thing happen again. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of at a loss at this point. So uh, uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out right now. I don't want to make any like rash decisions and start disassembling this car and making it immobile. So uh, you guys, flying boxes, good job, Troy. So you guys know what to do. Hit the comment section down below. Go through the interweb. See what you can come up with. Chrysler Techs, assemble. We need you and we need you now.